If you are planning to set up a Yaskawa HV600, we've got good news. The setup process is quick and easy for a qualified electrical professional to complete. The Technical Training Department of Yaskawa America Incorporated presents Easy HV600 AC Drive Setup for HVAC Fan and Pump Applications. At Yaskawa, we know your time is valuable, and that's why we designed the HV600 to meet all of your needs. In this video, we will cover an overview of what's provided in the packaging box with every HV600, the quick setup procedure up to motor test operation, and additional procedures for some common installation steps related to control wiring and programming. So let's begin with a quick look of what you'll get in the box with each new HV600 drive. Note the quick reference label on the box exterior. This new quick reference label makes it easy to download product manuals and the new Drive Wizard mobile application before installation. Yaskawa has enhanced the information package with our new AC drives. The needs of our customers have shaped the media and the included product instructions. Inside the box, you'll find a survey card with Yaskawa technical support contacts. After you complete your new HV600 installation, we want your valuable feedback on how we can evolve our product even more to meet your needs. In exchange for 90 seconds of your time, you'll receive a priority phone code, and that puts you at the front of the line if you ever call our hotline for technical support. The quick setup procedure makes the complicated simple with easy to understand graphics. The procedure focuses on the tasks that all of our customers will do with AC drives. You'll also find the installation and primary operation manual. Use this document if you need more details to support what's in the quick setup procedure. And a mounting drilling template is included with HV600 models that are less than 165 amps. Now we'll show you how easy it is to start up a new HV600 AC drive using the included instructions. With 10 simple steps, startup of your HV600 will be quick and easy. Later on, we'll also touch on additional procedures for some common applications related to control wiring and programming. We're about to demonstrate the procedure to set up an HV600 drive, but first, make sure to read the safety instructions carefully before you install, wire, or operate this product. Safety is always critical when dealing with high power circuitry. Wear gloves, safety glasses, an arc flash rated coat, and hearing protection. All electrical work should be performed by authorized personnel with appropriate startup training. A proper lockout tagout process is absolutely essential, so you'll need lockout tagout equipment. In this startup, we'll be using Yaskawa's HV600 IP55 and UL Type 12 certified drive for protection against dust. The clear cover is easy to use and even allows programming while the door is shut. The first step is to confirm the drive and motor specifications. Drive information can be found on the label on the side of the drive and the front cover. It's also a good idea to gather all of the tools required so that things go smoothly throughout the process. Then, in step two, confirm the correct drive installation environment. Now, there are multiple enclosure types for the HV600 with different ratings for environmental protection, so be sure to reference your drive's manual before installation. In step three, use the enclosed drilling template to mount the drive. Yaskawa offers mounting templates, mechanical drawings, and 3D models to assist installation planning and to ensure the proper mounting points. Be sure the template is level before marking the mounting locations. Information is also provided if you have a single drive or multiple drives in your facility. In 
Step 4. Select the motor and power wires, wire strip length, crimp terminals, and branch circuit protection. Locate the drive model in the chart to find the correct wire range. Wire size and clamp down torque information is also listed on a label on the inside of the front cover. On this label is a gauge that shows the extent you should strip back insulation on control, power, and ground wiring. Both input and output terminal size and shape vary depending on model size, so be sure to use the right tools and torque settings as indicated in the instructions. Yaskawa recommendations for branch circuit protection are listed in the quick setup procedure and the installation manual. Step 5 involves removing the keypad and front cover and reinstalling the conduit bracket for non-cabinet installations. Also, remove the necessary conduit knockouts on the conduit bracket plate specific to your application. Confirm that all power sources are turned off and you have performed the correct lockout-tagout procedure before doing any wiring. In step 6, install the motor wiring and power wiring. Once all power is deactivated and locked out, wire the incoming ground source, then wire the input terminals, L1, L2, and L3. Be sure to separate line power wires from motor wiring using conduit or cable tray dividers. Connect the motor wires to drive terminals T1, T2, and T3 and don't forget to connect the motor ground to the drive's ground terminal. Once you've completed and verified all of the wiring connections, Step 7. Reinstall the front cover and keypad. Then, in Step 8, you can energize the drive and confirm that it's ready. You'll see the digital operator and LED status ring light up on the front of the HV600. Now, if you see a fault or alarm indication, reference the troubleshooting instructions in the Quick Setup Procedure and Installation Manual. At Step 9, Set the motor rated current, the FLA, from the motor nameplate in E201 using the HV600 keypad. We will program the motor rated FLA current from the motor nameplate into the drive to protect the motor from overload conditions. This is the minimum step required to operate an induction motor in the VF control mode, which is the factory default. The goal is to run the motor briefly to check for correct motor rotation. The tenth and final step is to set the drive for hand operation and check the motor rotation direction. Select hand and press enter. Then set an appropriate test speed and press enter again. Warning, pressing enter at this next step will cause the motor to rotate. Ensure that all personnel and objects are clear of the motor shaft before pressing enter. If the motor is rotating in the wrong direction, you can remedy this by swapping the two leads on the output of the drive or at the motor's conduit box. Confirm that all power sources are turned off and you have performed the correct lockout-tagout procedure before doing any wiring. If the motor is rotating in the correct direction, then you have finished the installation and primary operation quick setup procedure. You can now mechanically connect the motor to a driven load. Now we will touch on some additional procedures for some common installation steps related to control wiring and programming. These procedures may or may not apply to your specific application. However, these are very common application configurations for the drive.
The first additional procedure is control method selection. Start by selecting the correct control method for your application from the parameter menu. Another way to do this is to navigate to the menu and select Parameters, Initialization, A102 Control Method Selection, and from here, select the control method based on motor type, which you'll find on the motor nameplate. The default setting is VF Control for a typical standard induction motor. Alternate motor settings, such as permanent magnet and other specialty motors, may require additional programming. Contact tech support if additional service is required. Additional procedure 2 is setting the drive's frequency reference and run command. You can find the appropriate setting for the drive's frequency reference and run command in the Parameter menu, then select Applications. Frequency reference options in B101 include analog inputs, serial communications, optional PCBs, or user input from the keypad. For communication methods, refer to the Technical Reference Manual for special installation needs. The Run Command settings are applied in the B102 menu. There are many options to choose from for different application needs. Some Run Command options require a two-step process. This process would use the Run Command key on the keypad and another input choice from User Input. Additional Procedure 3 is assigning the correct acceleration and deceleration time for your motor and application. Navigate to the menu and select Parameters, then select from the C1 group to assign the right values for your application. In Additional Procedure 4, Reference the key drive monitors to verify that the drive is operating as intended. Once everything is functioning, we can fine-tune the drive settings. Monitor the LED status ring on the front of the drive for a few moments to confirm proper operation. If the application is operating as intended, you need to save your parameter settings to complete the startup. Additional Procedure 5 is fine-tuning and setting of application parameters. These application parameters can optimize the operation of your drive and include PID, application presets, energy savings, sleep functions, and more. In Additional Procedure 6, perform a backup of parameters for recall later if needed. Go to Menu Selection F2 and scroll to Parameter Backup Restore. Then select Standard Parameters, select Backup, and choose one of the four backup locations. Then, verify your selection choice to save the parameter settings. If you are sure, select Yes, and you will then be redirected back to the Backup Restore Location menu with a time and date stamp for your saved parameters. Other ways to save parameters include automatic backup, user initialization, Drive Wizard, and Drive Wizard Mobile. If you're accessing data on a PC, you can manage your HV600 with the HVAC Drive Wizard software. In the field, Drive Wizard Mobile provides a convenient on the go way to backup or restore Yaskawa Drive settings to your smartphone or to the free Yaskawa Drive Cloud. Well, now it's time for everyone's favorite segment review questions. Question number one On which label is a gauge for stripping back insulation on control? power, and ground wiring. This information is located on a label that also contains the wiring and clampdown details on the inside of the front cover. Question number two. If during the process of setting up your HV600 you observe that the motor is rotating in the wrong direction, what can you do to fix it? The answer is to simply swap the two leads on the drive output or at the motor's conduit box. Well, we told you that setup of the HV600 for HVAC applications would be fast and simple. If you need any assistance, we're just a phone call away. If you have any issues with startup, call 1-800-YASKAWA for 24-7, 365 customer service at no charge. Be sure to have your serial number available for faster response time. Flexibility, sustainability, and ease of use. These are the hallmarks of the HV600 AC drive, an extension to Yaskawa's robust line of variable speed drives. 
At Yaskawa, we do everything in our power to make each experience with us better than the last. Because to us, it's personal. And we make the complicated simple. To learn more about the HV600, visit yaskawa.com. Thanks for watching.